Hello, hello, hello. I've got a great video for you today. We're learning this cool thing called the cake or ladder method. As we often do, we'll start by just defining what it is we're talking about. And then I'll show you how to use it. So let's take the first question and answer that one up front. What is the cake or ladder method? Well, it's this fantastic way to find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple at the same time. It's awesome, you'll love it. You ready? As you can probably already tell, this method can be known by different names. Sometimes it's called the ladder method, and sometimes it's called the cake method. But when I see it all completed, I think that these pictures should actually be upside down. <laughs> Uh-oh, oh, sorry guys. Anyway, let's start with a quick look at how we have found greatest common factor and least common multiple before. Greatest common factor first. We took our two numbers, 30 and 12, and we listed the factors of both. Then we compared the two lists to find the biggest number that both have in common. So in this case, that number is six. Least common multiple was a similar process. We'll take our same numbers, 30 and 12, we'll list their multiples, and then compare lists. This time, we wanna find the smallest number in both. So in this case, looks like the least common multiple is 60. Now, let's check out a way to do it at the same time. We'll still use our same two numbers, 30 and 12. We just found the greatest common factor to be six and the least common multiple to be 60. So just remember that for a second. The first thing we're going to do is bring in a list of prime numbers to the side here, just as a reference. We only wanna try prime numbers as our factors and the first prime numbers are the most common, so I like to have them handy. Then we'll write down our two numbers, 30 and 12, and draw a line. This is the first rung of our ladder, or the first tier of our cake. Now, we'll look at our list of prime numbers and start at two. Does two go into both 30 and 12? Yeah, so let's write that down. And now we ask, how many times does two go into 30? 15. And how many times does 2 go into 12? 6. Now let's look at these new numbers and we'll do the same process again. Does 2 go into 15 and 6? No. How about 3? Yes. So we'll draw another line. We'll write down 3. And how many times does 3 go into 15? 5. And how many times does 3 go into 6? 2. Our new numbers are five and two, which are both prime numbers. They have no factors in common, which means we are finished. Now here comes the cool part. Check out just the left side here. If we multiply these two numbers together, two times three, we get six. That's the greatest common factor. And if we look at all of the outer numbers, we multiply those together, two times three is six, times five is 30, times two is 60. That's the least common multiple. And voila, we found them both at the same time. Let's try another one. We'll find the greatest common factor and the least common multiple of 24 and 40. First, we'll bring in our handy prime numbers list, then write down our first two numbers and draw a line. Next, we'll try out our prime numbers. Does two go into 24 and 40? Yes, so we'll write it down. How many times does two go into 24? 12, and into 40? 20 times. Now we repeat that process with our new numbers, 12 and 20. Does two go into both of those? Yes, so we'll draw another line and write down two. How many times does two go into 12? Six, and into 20? 10 times. 
Now it looks like we can keep going. Does two go into six and 10? <laughs> yes, again. So we'll write down another two. Two goes into six three times, and two goes into 10 five times. Three and five are both prime numbers, and there are no factors they have in common, so we stop. Now the fun part. Looking at the left side, we'll multiply these numbers together, and there we go. The greatest common factor is eight. And to find the least common multiple, we look at all the numbers on the outside, multiply those together, and we get 120. Isn't this cool? Oh wait, what if we have three numbers? Good question. Let's try one of those. We'll use 16, 24, and 48. We'll draw our line and check out our prime numbers list. Does two go into all three numbers? Yes. It goes into 16 eight times, 24 12 times, and 48 24 times. And let's try again. Does two go into all of those? Yes again. So we'll draw a line, write down our two, and our new numbers are four, six, and 12. Keep going. Can we use two again? Yes. So we'll draw another line, write down a two, and our new numbers are two, three, and six. Okay, let's try again. Does two go into all of those? You know what? There isn't a number that can divide into two, three, and six. So now what? Are we done? Well, not quite. Look at three and six. These are both divisible by three. So here's how this part works. I'm going to indent my line a little bit to indicate that this factor didn't go into all the numbers. Do you see? It's starting to look like an upside down cake now. Uh -huh. Now I'll write down my three. I like to use a different color as another reminder. Now since three can't go into two, I'll just bring that two down. It goes into three once and three goes into six two times. Now I have all prime numbers on the bottom, but two are the same, which means I can keep going because two can go into both twos. <laughs> so I'll write down a two, two goes into two once. This one I'll just bring down and two goes into two once. And I'll stop here because there's not much we can do with three ones. Now when we find the greatest common factor this time, we have to be careful. Let's look at the factors on the left. I only want to circle the ones that were factors of each number I was looking at. I need to leave the indented tiers alone for now. We'll multiply these together and we have the greatest common factor of eight. For the least common multiple, all the numbers are back in. We can multiply all of them together and we get a least common multiple of 48. Well, that's it for the cake and ladder method. We learned what it is, and we learned how to use it. I think it's a pretty cool way to do it. So if you like it, go ahead and use it. But if you want to find the least common multiple and the greatest common factor separately, oh, well then do that. It's totally up to you because, well, you know how you think best. That's it for now. I'll see you later. <laughs>